episode 256 of the White Cat Outdoors podcast, bringing you to the table while we talk about the outdoors. Well, this past weekend was opening day of gun in New York. So all of us went up to camp and we had a really successful week at camp or weekend at camp rather. Frank uh, shot a buck Saturday and Austin shot a buck on Sunday, both really good bucks and Austin's was close to being one of the best ones we've ever killed up there. So it was a super exciting weekend. And this is the story for both of them. Last week, uh, we did a really long episode, uh, over two hours. People seemed to enjoy it. And we wanted to continue that. Not quite two hours, but uh, a little bit longer than we've been doing typically. So we hope you guys enjoy this style of episode. And uh, we're going to try to keep doing them in the future. But on that note, I'm going to quit rambling, and let's get tuned so in to this week's episode. Sin. I pull up my bow, and then I look dead at his antlers. I got out of the truck, and when I slammed the door, I heard gobbles all around me. Alaska, moose, spot and sock. That is the bucket list. I agree. Outdoors. What's, What's oh I totally did that on purpose. I was just waiting for you to talk. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another installment of the White Cat Outdoors podcast. Got a new voice bringing you in. I've done it a few times, but Frank so rudely interrupted me. Yeah. Kind of threw me off my track. But I'm sitting here with the whole crew. Yep, this is Austin Ironline. What's going on, everybody? You already heard White Talk. And I'm Nick. What's going on? And we got two big buck killers in the studio tonight i do want to bring up just real quick nothing to do with hunting but we were getting the volume set on the mics you've increased your volume exponentially from the test to what you're talking now because i'm excited yeah it is exciting stuff i'm just i'm amped to be sharing this deer camp series with our listeners because it's a good one yeah big sure weekend is. it was a very big weekend mm -hmm. some say the greatest weekend we've ever had at camp very people, true. People told me all the time, <laughs> the best camp we've ever had. Yeah, it was fun. But uh, Frank, you want to start us off? I, suppose, I think we should. We, we, we need to back way. Uh, yeah, oh, we okay. don't need to start. I, with I know. A big I'm buck trying story. to get these out. You know, I just Austin's excited. chomping at the bit. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, Tom, you that pisses me off that you said that because every time somebody says chomping at the bit, I say it's champing. Yeah, and you didn't even say it right. What's champing at the bit? Like what? That's how it's actually said, but no, well, apparently nobody says it that way. So I've just given up. What he always corrects. I tried a movement where I could get people to say it correctly, but it just it it didn't catch. So where is the correct origin of champing at the bit come from? The original saying is yeah, the but what is origin. champing? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> so then, how do you have anything to back it up that says that that's the way it's supposed to be done? I could Google search it right now. I've done it before. He has. He's Jamie, actually. Jamie, I'm, could you look that I'm up? I'm certain he <laughs> yeah. has done it on the podcast before because he's corrected us. It was back when we did the podcast at my parents' house, and he has for sure said. That was hundreds of episodes ago. Yeah, it was, but he did it. Yeah, you're going to have to look this up, Tom. All right. Give us some information. Talk to the listeners while I pull up this news feed. Will so, do. This installment of the Deer Camp series is filled with tradition. Yeah. Um, mm hmm. It's opening day of gun season, and I feel like there's a lot of people that hunt, but there's fewer people that archery hunt and stuff, and a lot of people hunting season starts with opening day of gun. Yeah. Um, and there's just a lot of Especially tradition. around our area. There's a lot of places like out west that don't have the same sort of traditional feeling to the opening day of gun, but in Pennsylvania, New York, I definitely think in Michigan it's, too. Yeah, it's for sure a different feel to the opening day of gun than any other season. Like, and I love archery hunting more than anything. Like that's hands down my go-to. I would pick that over everything, but 
the opening day of rifle is a very special special day to be in the woods yeah i think uh like deer camp and hunting camp is still very much alive in pennsylvania new york and michigan and stuff so like yeah i think that's it just gets a bunch of guys together they have a great time beforehand then they hit the woods and it's just a, it's an awesome experience all the way around yeah and the fact it wasn't a blizzard too <laughs> yeah usually i mean what was it last year uh, when we went up we've definitely hunted in snow opening day yeah mm-hmm or um, rain or it's usually shit weather for we actually had really day. good weather oh it was gorgeous you could oh. you couldn't ask for better weather than this weekend yeah no i got it this is according to webster's dictionary oh that's pretty reliable webster's says champ at the bit and it shows impatience at restraint to be restless uh, and it comes from something about horses when they bite their bits but, but wouldn't it, you call it like why is it called champing instead of chomping? Because if you chomp on something, you're Champing biting. is to show impatience at restraint. Okay, okay. So but, they are chomping on their bit, but they are champing in a different sense. Okay. I, I did not know this. Webster does acknowledge chomping at the bit oof. as an alternate variation, mm-hmm. but the original is, is champing. This is like the, and I'm, that's one guy who, who Webster, this dick on there thinks that he knows it all i i yeah i think webster's dictionary is probably a pretty reputable source i wish yeah. probably stop talking about webster's dick and get on with this anyway we did have beautiful weather yeah sure did <laughs> uh tom you didn't join us in deer camp this year can you explain why so we have another camp well, we don't have it but a family friend of ours has a much larger camp a little bit further east and ever since I was, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, I've been going up there for opening day of gun in New York. It's just a, a tradition that I've always enjoyed. So I've been trying to keep that alive, going up there, seeing the, the New York crew, having a good hunt with them. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, it's, it, we're I, trying I went to start a new tradition, but it's fine. You don't want to be a part of it, Tom. Yeah. Even I went up. You didn't expect me to be up there, too, right? Yeah, we all thought you were going to Ohio. Yeah. I, I knew he was coming up, but. He kept it a secret and I then pulled in. And it was, I, I screwed it up because I took. I went outside to take a pee and I opened the door. And I, I know. Like, I saw Frank <laughs> looking I was right like, at my truck. I'm I was like, like wow. who's here? He's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. I closed the door. I was like, that's, that's literally Austin's truck right there. He's like, yeah, he's here. Uh, uh, I screwed it all up. Um, but just like uh, opening day tradition, you know, we get up there Friday night, crack a few beers, a couple whiskeys. Maybe a lot of whiskeys, however you want to look at it. And we um, had a good fight to watch, too. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't even was... want to bring that up. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah. Austin was hilarious. He was pissed that it was on. He said, like, I'm not watching he's this He's the shit. reason it was on to yeah, start. He oh, I asked did want to watch for it. it to be put on. And then as soon as it was on, he's like, this is fucking stupid. Why are we watching this? And then as soon as anyone started talking, to you, shut, just shut the fuck up. I'm trying to watch the fight. He that doesn't was, sound like Austin. He was very back and forth. I mean, forth. that's a pretty common feedback from most viewers <laughs> on this yeah. fight. Oh, but. yeah, it was terrible. Anyway, we still had a good time. We had we some good We do have to talk about them showing Mike Tyson's ass on the screen. Austin got up and walked out of the camp. That he, doesn't surprise me. He was like, what the fuck? And just walked out. Oh, uh, no comment there. <laughs> but it was a good opening, uh, or night before opening day at Deer Camp. Um, watched a lot of White Tail Adrenaline. After that was done, and yeah, I and fell asleep to White Tail Adrenaline. I mean, after the fight, we put on White Tail Adrenaline. You know what? One of my favorite things about camp is putting White Tail Adrenaline on, putting the volume on zero, and just cranking the tunes. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good time. Austin actually tried something new. He had he was watching the Steelers game Sunday, had the volume cranked at a hundred. On the TV, it wasn't. A, it only goes up to like sixty. No, it, no, goes up it to was 100. at a hundred, and oh. that's where he had it. It wasn't that loud either, but it and was then he also, fucking loud. And then he had the radio also full blast because he said he was trying to watch the game but wanted to listen to the music, and it was just a battle back and forth trying to get... Well, I was listening to Renegade and watching the Steelers. I don't know. You guys don't Renegade throw in the invisible towel. towel. Yeah. But anyway, we got a Steelers win, and I shot a buck. Couldn't beat that. Oh. Why, Spoiler why alert. you blowing oh, the doors okay. in, Austin? Sorry. Oh, my okay. God, dude. We'll Build get the there. suspense. So Friday night, we do it upright. Saturday morning comes along, and uh, actually, I guess Friday night we always big part of it is 
picking out where you're going to go. Um, yeah, and that's always quite an ordeal because everyone's always like, like, hey, where are you going? I don't know. Where are you going to go? And nobody's ever sober during this ordeal. No, and you got to ask 17 times. Well, where nobody are you wants. Going? And then 20 minutes later, no, seriously, where where are you guys going? And nobody no one wants ever to be has that an answer. guy. That There's picks always the, the guy, first. oh, I got to wake up and see what the wind's doing. Yeah. You know where you're going. I, well, nobody wants to be that guy picking a stand first, and then you don't want to take it from somebody that maybe wanted it that didn't say it. So nobody wants to be that first. Yeah. I'm going here. Um, you know what we should do now that we have a dartboard? We should get a map with all the stand locations. It's a good idea. And throw a dart, and whatever whoever's closest to the stand that they want gets the stand. I could get behind that. It's kind of like the spin the wheel mm-hmm. idea I brought up. We could even just play darts, and then like the winner or the loser of darts, like probably probably the loser would pick first because nobody wants to pick. No, so I can, think everybody wants to pick first, but no but, one will do it. So now you're forced to pick first. So if you played 301, the winner has to pick first, yeah. and you just keep going down the line. Yeah. Maybe a new tradition. Yeah. Tradition like none other. But anyway, we got all of our stands picked, went to bed at the uh, early in the night. I, I don't think I went to bed until 3.30. Yeah, that sounds about right. It was, yeah, it was a late one. It was not early. That's Oh, well, it was early on the next day. I had to sleep in the next morning. Yeah, babe skipped the morning hunt. I did. Made a responsible decision. <laughs> it's, those big bucks are in no hurry to die. Yeah, it was, it was a slow And we found morning. that out. Yeah, it was a very slow morning. I never saw a deer. Nick saw a couple little bucks. And, and Austin brought McDonald's breakfast back. So. Yeah. I did. And I don't, think, I don't think my dad saw anything in the morning. No, I saw two bucks and a small doe, but neither of the bucks, like I'd have been eating nuts if I shot either one of the bucks. So yeah, Hmm. wasn't going to do that. Mm -hmm. So would we, what was the afternoon like? We were just Jay chilling. It was Saturday. I think we put some college football on. Yeah. We were just Um, hanging out. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't go get Your dad did leave and go and get a tree stand because he found a spot because your dad's been He's hunted up there kind of periodically, but I feel like in the last year or two, he's starting to come up more and more. Mm-hmm. And one of the big issues, or it's not even an issue, but when we have somebody new coming into camp, there's not a ton of trails. So you have to know where a stand is. There's no like, take this trail and yeah. then veer off at this point. Like you just have to know, hey, there's a stand over here. Mm-hmm. Um, so your dad, a lot of times seems to go just on he'll, foot. Yeah, he'll just go walk and find a good spot to hang out and observe yeah. from the ground and he found a spot and he does hunt out of stands that he knows where they are but there's a lot of stands that he doesn't know because he doesn't come up when we're doing like all of our tree stand checks to know where every single stand is yeah, yeah he picked out a great spot too over there mm-hmm. yeah and he's got a stand now that we're going to put up over there so we actually used to have a stand there yeah um, it was for Tom put it there a little more wasn't it mm-hmm. uh, no it was, it pretty, was pretty close it was like it. right between where your camera is and like where my food plot is, if you come like straight up the hill from my food plot, mm. like right between your camera and there, Tom used to have a stand. In I there. don't know. That's I think we to- took that one down before you started hunting with us. Yeah, we did. It was it was quite a few years ago. Is that uh, the one right on the edge of the swamp? Yeah. Yeah, that you used to tell everybody was in a cherry and it was in a maple. Because <laughs> I didn't want anyone else hunting it. <laughs> yeah, he was like, oh, it's in a big cherry down on the side of the swamp. The big pine went, tree. Nick went no looking pines. for it one day, and he's like, "That's a fucking maple tree." <laughs> yeah, uh, not a cherry. Um, you found it though. It was yeah. pretty easy. You go in the corner at a forty-five degree angle, at one hundred and fifty yards, you can't miss it. It's right over there, right where we seen them crows circling the one day. Yeah, go right there. <laughs> yeah, so we we regroup at camp, and we all pick new stands. I ended up. <clears throat> oh, go ahead, Austin. Oh, I finished breakfast and I went right to public land. Started walking oh, that's around. Right. Yeah, because we were back at camp when Austin brought breakfast back, and we were in the middle of eating. And Austin walks in with all his camel. He's like, "What the fuck are you guys doing?" We're like, "We're we're eating, dude. We're gonna all day have sit. a little turkey snooze." He's so like, like, "No 11, way! It's like, it's it's like time eleven to go. o'clock." <laughs> so he peaced out on us. Well, and then I I headed to the game lands, the spot I had picked out, and. Of course, there's seven vehicles, like, right where I wanted to go. and It sounds like New York game lands. Mm-hmm. Well, I figured 11 o'clock, everyone's out getting lunch or something to eat. Yeah, it wasn't the case, but I did go down further and found a spot, saw a couple dough. But 
didn't feel like wasting one. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of took a, uh, an approach of, uh, so we have the best year of corn we've ever had. So I figured I'd set up where I could shoot both of those corn fields. And I'll be honest, if I had to bet money, I was shooting something that night. Like I was firm around the way I was coming home with something. I'm from around the way. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how I felt walking in there. I was like, there's no way I don't get something here. Um, and I tell you what, I sat from, well, we got in there about two o'clock. Yeah. From two to dark, I never saw a deer. Um, just uh, pretty slow for me. But yeah. right around the end of the evening. Yeah, it was right before last light. I hadn't seen, you know, we got in, like Nick said, about two o'clock. And it was one of those hunts where you're excited the whole time. You're like in a spot and you're like, it's about to happen. Like every minute felt like that was when it was about to happen the entire time. I bumped, actually, I take it back. I didn't see nothing. I did bump two deer when I went in mm. and probably wouldn't have done that if you would have just been out there all day. And that's true. But turns out I didn't need to be. Um, so I got in, bumped those two deer and the whole time I was like ready to go. It was, there was about to be deer on me the whole time. Was I, that your first time hunting that stand? Um, I think since yeah. it became a lock on, yeah, yeah, it's I a sweet so. little setup. Yeah, because it's had, up there, bait ways, but yeah, I had hunted it before when it was in the uh, cottonwood that fell down, but I <laughs> haven't hunted it since it was in the new tree, and it's a nice little spot, nice and easy to get into. Yeah, it, it, it surprisingly, <laughs> as far as stands go that you put up, it was very easy to get into. I think Nick added a couple extra steps. Well, I'm glad for that because if well, it starts out really rough and then it gets better as you climb. Could you stop sneezing? Yeah, we're going to go take a break. You guys keep talking. I don't know what your problem is. So <laughs> anyway, I get set up. I'm amped, ready to go. It's about to happen all night and didn't see a freaking thing. Um, head on a swivel all night and it was getting to, to be right at the end of the evening. It was probably the last 10 minutes of light and where i thought the deer were going to come from was like kind of out in front of me on like a 45 um i thought they were going to kind of work down this creek right at the bottom of the hill and cross into the food plot or stay up high towards your stand austin but i would have had a shot at him either way and just nothing was coming i wasn't hearing i never even heard anything that was like leaves rustling that i was like okay something's coming and i just happened to turn my head at the right moment and saw a flash of antler going through the trees and i was like oh shit it's and it was in the complete opposite direction that i thought everything was going to happen nick had that happen to him a couple times yeah we've all been there so i real quick throw my gun up and before i look through the scope i was like okay right here's my spot that's you know my only opportunity to hit this deer and right before he walked into that i kind of got a little bit of a feel for what his antlers were and got down in the scope as soon as he stepped in i stopped him he looked it was perfect broadside he stopped right exactly where i needed him to and squeaked. how did you stop him i just gave him the old map but it was he was over 100 yards away so it was a very audible map i asked nick i was like did you hear me because it was loud i kind of hollered it i was hollering at him um but he stopped I let him have it and he took off like he was hit, but I only saw him for like three steps and he disappeared. I didn't see anything. And like I said, it was right at the very end of the evening. Which way did he run? Along the edge of the swamp. South. Yeah. He, so from my point did of he view. Did he come from the north and he was working yeah, south? Yeah, he came, yeah, like from basically like the main road hmm. and was working down between me and the beanstalk. Yeah. And right where that wet spot is, that little marshy spot, yep, he was right there. Like in right my on the mind, edge of I that. thought he was coming out of the swamp. No, no, opposite. Mm. No, and, and from and my he ran right. Remember where your doe died? The, the one you killed with your six yeah. five out of the corner there. Yeah, that miracle that it, I killed one with a six five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It ran right over towards where she died. So from where I was at, I wasn't that far from Frank, a couple hundred yards, and I heard the gun go off, which really startled me it was very loud um and then i heard like rustling and then i heard it crash 
And he immediately texted me and was like, hey, I heard it crash. But I didn't hear it crash because it kind of ran more towards closer to Nick and away from me. Mm -hmm. And I knew where I had shot it. And there's not a lot of like landmarks to walk to between that stand and where he was at. It's just thick. Yeah. I couldn't like pinpoint a spot if I were to get down and walk over there in the dark. So I was like, I need to get down right now and get over there before dark and find my point of impact. So I climbed down, got over there, and was kind of shining my light around because by the time I had gotten over there, it was basically dark. Well, and I, I see Frank with his headlamp coming over. And then as he gets closer to where he shot, I hear more rustling and I hear breathing. So I start flashing my light at Frank, like trying to signal to him like, whoa, hold up, hold up. Yeah, and I didn't plan on pursuing it at all. I just wanted to get to that point and find my impact so i knew this is our starting point i'm gonna stand here and wait until after dark i'm gonna just gonna chill here while everything happens nick finishes up his hunt and i saw him flashing his light at me and i at that point i could hear the deer breathing as well you know very labored breathing it was thrashing and you know it was done and so I stopped and he started climbing down and I was just hanging out and right there at the point of impact there was blood everywhere I knew I had smoked him and it was just a matter of go follow it and Nick came over to me we kind of had a little discussion and went back to camp to meet up with dad and wait for Austin to get back and hung out had a beer went back down got to that spot and right where I shot it was like I shot a paint can and it was just splattered five feet on the other side of the deer, just blood everywhere. We followed pin drops. It was like, it was like that paint for like five, 10 yards. And then it just went dark. I mean, there was just nothing. It was (laughs) a drop, 10 yards drop, drop. You know, it was nothing and it didn't go far. Like, and we could tell where its track was. We weren't in any danger. Like I have no idea where this thing went. And Nick and I could hear where it was thrashing. We were going to find it. There was no, like, worry about it. It was just very shocking that there was zero blood. Mm -hmm. From where the impact was, you would have thought it would have just been dumping the whole way. But there was nothing. And got up to it, and he was smoked, perfect, double lung. And he was was done right there. It was was beautiful. Couldn't ask for anything else. It was, yeah. Uh, Super tall. Um, I was a buck super. we were familiar with. Yeah, we had pictures of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, one side real beautiful, tall four points, and then the other side was just like a fork. Yeah, he um, was a little goofy. Which we we have a ton of that gene up there. I know like we have Tom racks. killed one like that, and we have another one that has just a big fork on the one side. We had that big five by three last year. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was had a beautiful five on one side, and then a giant fork and a brow tine on the other. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but we need to we need to start killing them bastards. I don't know what ever happened to that five by three. Neither do I. Uh, I don't know. Lot Amish. Yeah, I'm sure one of them got it in June. So we uh, we loaded Frank's buck up, took it back, and celebrated pretty good uh, for a little bit, and uh, went down, treated ourselves to dinner, and. Uh, I swear they put sleeping pills. Yeah, in they, our they must have drugged or us or something. Because something. we yeah. got back and Austin was sawing logs hard by, by nine. minutes. But, as yeah. soon as I put my head down. We put on white tail adrenaline and Austin was dead. He was there was no getting him up. Yeah. He, he woke up in the morning. It was you know five o'clock, and he's like, "I feel like I slept like thirteen hours." I'm like, what? "You damn near did. It was you went to bed at nine o'clock." Well, what did we wake up to? A, a cat filing its nails on the side yeah, of the Yeah, there was a fucking cat that just wandered up out of nowhere and walked into the camp, and we kicked it out the night before, but it was just standing there raking its nails on the edge of the camp. Probably the waiting for you guys to let him in. He was, too. He was like, hey, I'm still here, guys. Let me in there. I couldn't sleep. It was like 86 degrees in camp, and we couldn't leave oh the door open. Oh, my God. We couldn't harder than that. I had the windows open. It well, doesn't window. do as much as the door being open because we couldn't have the door open because of the cat, and... Yeah, it sounds I just, like I would have been right at home. I just baked all. I could not sleep. I was sitting there sweating, you know, 
Yeah. And I stayed up for a while watching White Tail. So did I. And, you and, and I bullshitted but I, most of the night. I was fine. I wasn't that un I mean it was hot, but I wasn't uncomfortable. And I like I would say something to Nick and he'd be like ah, out of breath, just pissed off at how hot it was. He's like, open a fucking window or something. We, I'm like, hey, Frank it's and open, I had dude. like the longest conversation possible. And what I mean by that is like just periodically throughout the night, like through three AM, we would just like back and forth like it might go an hour it was says, one conversation but you like, guys were still off the yes. oh yeah <laughs> neither of us were sleeping so we we're like it was one conversation but it would be like we'd talk and then just nothing and like an hour later you'd like revert back to the conversation mm -hmm. keep talking nothing, nothing like an hour later i'm like man i'm still awake frank you know i'm just like <laughs> keep going back and forth. all night long i could not sleep yeah mm. And yeah. then Austin, I was cracking up in the morning because I shot a buck. I was like, I don't think I'm going to get up in the morning for a doe hunt. Like, it's, Morning doe hunts are so overrated. They, they truly are. I, I, don't, I wasn't about it. I wasn't going to do it. And Austin woke up. I woke up and I like, I looked at what time it was. I was like, oh shit, Nick better get going. It's like it quarter was, after six. Yeah, it was almost light. It was, it was like 20 minutes till light. Well, we didn't get dressed until 10 minutes before shooting light. Well, I, I had my I camera picture. Up. I came by the trail camera at six twenty-five. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I know that. Like, did you leave before Austin? No, we're getting there. What, yeah, <laughs> if so, you left after Austin, that's a lie because the photo of Austin is at six forty-five. You might be thinking a Saturday morning, but Sunday morning, no. either either way, it's so, not important. I look at my phone and I was like, "Hey, Nick, you better get up if you want to hunt." And then I turned to tell Austin to wake up, and he was gone. I was like. Huh. Apparently Austin just got up and didn't oh, say anything. Didn't, didn't, didn't wake anybody Wait, up. Wait, hold on. I went outside to take a leak and I saw the sun coming up and I just ran to the truck, threw my gear on and I looked back in. Nick finally got up and he's putting his gear on. Well, he didn't have anything so on at the Austin point. Austin opens the door and I was like, oh, there he is. And Nick's like, or before he came in, Nick's like, did that motherfucker leave? And he looked out. He's like, okay, his truck's still here. Austin comes inside. He's like, it's time to go. Like Nick we, looked like he still had another 10 minutes, so I just yeah. I left. Nick's like, I'm almost ready. I'll be right there. He's like, whatever. Shut the door. Left. Drove drove off. And Nick goes outside. He's like, did he, he really fucking left? And he He's walked gone. outside. He's like, that motherfucker left me here. So Nick had to go by himself. And it's I was not a like, fart. I mean, it's not a big deal. We no. drive down. No, I mean, it, it's a few hundred yards. But like, I pull in and Austin's still in his truck. No, like, no, I'm halfway down. I guess I saw Nick pull. He was like, forty oh, yards man. down the trail, and do you think he stopped and you know gave me a fist bump? Good luck, nothing. He looked back, <laughs> saw me, and he just... I'm walking in the woods. I'm walk going in. It was <laughs> he game had a time. big buck to kill. Yeah. He did too, but I know I should have waited. But but yeah, I did end up going out for a morning doe because I was like, well, I had to wake up and listen to Nick. Bitch and I can about confirm Austin. I can see him up on the hill. So I did go out for about an hour and wait for a doe to come out but nothing did so i took just a little bit of a walk I a to fox try to did. yeah I, I saw a fox a really nice fox big male uh but he it was funny he came out i heard him coming and i was like what's going on and i turned look saw him come out of this little hedgerow and i didn't have my gun in my hand it was leaning against a tree so i was like there's no way i'm gonna get a shot at this thing if i move he's gonna get me and he starts like gagging and throwing up and for like a minute straight he was just gagging retching and i was like you know maybe i can move and get this while he's distracted so i get my gun i pull it and as i'm pulling it up and i get to my shoulder like i happen to just barely turn my foot a little bit and it cracked a leaf and he quit puking immediately locked eyes took off i was like damn it it was it was, it was close but yeah, that was that was the end of the morning hunt for me. I went back to back to the cabin and got back in my cot and was going to relax a little bit. So I hadn't seen anything at this point. It's about 8.45-ish. Well, you've done a, a long sit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you stayed that long. Yeah. So, nothing. He's an hour and a half into his hunt and <laughs> just beside himself. <laughs> I, yeah, I couldn't believe it that there was nothing coming through there. Yeah, but anyway, I I had the same um, result, too. I mean, it, it was like 8.30. I'm like, man, I can't believe I haven't seen a deer yet. And, and it felt like a really good morning. It, was, it did. It, it felt was perfect. like you could see anything at any moment, and I sure did. I mean, another 15 minutes went by, 
I saw. But well, you were looking behind you. You were looking through the bra or through the tops, right? No, it came. I know, but weren't the... you weren't you looking behind you? Oh yeah, at this moment, I was doing a full scan, so I'm kind of looking up where Frank was walking, see if any deer got pushed down or moving towards me. And I look back over, and I just see a a body of a deer running right at me. So I kind of swung over, got my gun, didn't know what it was yet. And I saw a tine, so I'm getting ready. It's coming right at me, probably about 40 yards at this point. And I get my gun up. And he must have heard me move or maybe caught a glimpse of me. So I'm standing like this, or had my gun halfway down, almost ready to shoot. And he goes behind a tree, and I lock on, lock on. I'm waiting for him to come out. And he finally took a couple steps, and yeah, it was like 20 yards and made a great shot. And he bucked it right towards the swamp. And... He was moving pretty good, so I felt like I needed to put another one in him. And <laughs> he texted us and said, "Bang, bang, motherfuckers!" <laughs> yeah, I, I'm surprised I didn't hear the shots up at so, the cabin, but I got that text, and I didn't hear shots, so I immediately called him. I was like, "What the fuck happened?" And well, so he didn't answer. Austin uh, shoots, and then I hear the second shot. Now I get nervous, you know, because like typically one shot, you know, it's done. Yeah, that second shot, you start to get a little nervous. Like, oh man, like what happened? You start playing through scenarios. And then Frank tried calling, couldn't get through. So he texted and said, do you need anything? And Austin just said, a knife. And then... <laughs> well, so, you first asked, is it a buck or a bear? No, he said if it... I it was, said, the knife was first. And yeah. I said, awesome. Was it a bear? And then Frank goes, was it a buck? And Austin goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just put him in a big loop. But, uh, no, I pretty much saw him right where he went down. He was kicking the brush pile. And we got over there and... Same thing with mine. I mean, I saw blood right at the entry of the bullet, mm -hmm. and we we're walking the trail. And you had just... quite a bit of blood. Yeah, though. yours was oh, a yeah, lot I guess easier than mine. Yours yeah. had less blood at the impact, and a lot it opened up a lot more as it went. Yeah, but a yeah, big old, big old nine, another big old eight, buck. Eight, probably legally at eight, 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 eight and a half. Eight and a yeah. half. Uh, great buck though. <clears throat> yeah. Um, man, was it a good time. Yeah, we, he I, did I have a pumped. little broken spot on his tie. It looked pretty fresh too. Yeah, that was your second shot. I, I that antler off. It kind of makes me want to believe it, but I don't know. No, remember we looked at trail cam photos from a week before, and it was busted. There's oh, no yeah. way that break was a week old. No, no way. I don't know. It was still perfectly white. I'm telling you. I don't know. I got How can you see from a trail camera photo if it was busted off? Well, that time was... would have been probably a foot tall, you know. Oh my God! Listen to him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not believing that you can see it on a. I don't camera. believe it either. No way. You'll have to show me the. My picture story so in I my head is always going to be that Austin shot it off. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'll tell we'll everybody forever. But uh, overall, great weekend. That was fun. That's. Yeah. I think the we've killed multiple deer in a weekend, but I think that might be our most successful weekend, especially opening day weekend we've ever had. Because we yeah, killed like a buck and a doe. I, when you and I killed bucks two days in a row, that was an opening weekend. Mm -mm. And I was on, I wasn't like I was up there by myself, so like I didn't get the full mm -hmm. camaraderie. I had to drag it out myself. Yeah. Um, Austin got to put his truck to work. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah. Drove right down in there, and that made it really nice. Yeah. It did. We only Frank and I dragged his buck maybe a hundred yards. Yeah. And Austin backed the truck up down to the swamp, and where we went. Yeah. And Tom, what did you see all weekend at your famous camp up there? I had a hell of a weekend. I rolled into camp about 6 o'clock Friday night. We're having a good time, chewing the fat, drinking some beers. Everybody gets their stands picked out. And I thought I was in the money spot. I was 120 yards away from where the biggest buck on the farm was ever killed. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is going to happen. I'm, I'm shooting. Where did you end up? Pocahontas. Okay. All right. And I'm shooting does, so I'm like, I'm good. There's gonna be a doe that comes out into this yeah. food plot. I'm something is dying for yeah. sure. And you were you were geared for an all day, right? Oh yeah. That stand is like pretty far back in the woods. Like it's it's a haul to get there. So yeah, it's, you're not walking in for a two hour morning hunt. Opening day of gun. Yeah. You if you're gonna go that deep in, you plan for the day because it's just it's weight. I bet you it's now. Granted, this is private property, but the trail you take, I bet you're going every bit of three quarters of a mile mm -hmm. to get back to where this spot's at. It's deep, so I get there and I'm situated, and we had 
pretty steady about 25 mile an hour winds it's nothing the, crazy with the occasional like 40 <laughs> mile an hour gust that and, makes for a cold day yeah so I'm, even when it's not that cold if you have that stiff of a wind all day you you feel it all the way through you yeah so i'm in this tree and i'm like swaying back and forth getting blasted in the face by wind and every time i'm in a tree stand when it's really windy i think and i don't even know if you remember this when i sent you that video of you whipping your tree back and <laughs> yeah. forth yeah i think of that every fucking time who was it that sang that song uh willow smith yeah i whip my hair back and forth yeah. <laughs> oh that's like i changed it to i whip my tree back and forth <laughs> i was I up in a tree and my climber was like <laughs> swaying in the wind yeah uh, i think about that every time oh that was good <laughs> but about 10 o'clock i decide you know i'm gonna pull my gun up and try and hold on like this clump of grass out in this food plot <laughs> and I, I pull my so a very eventful morning <laughs> yeah i hadn't seen anything up until this point so I pull my gun up that I'm trying to hold on this big patch of grass that's probably about the size of a lungs. Did and you I, say a lungs? Yes, a, a pair of lungs. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for the life of me, cannot keep my crosses. My trees just moving all I'm like, this is stupid. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> so I get to thinking, I'm like, you know, I'm like 300 yards away from a big tent blind. And I have my shooting sticks. I'm like, I'm just going to go climb up in there for a little bit, get out of this wind. So I take a walk, and I go climb up in this tent blind, and I'm sitting there. And uh, the owner's brother, John, he had planned on hunting that tent blind in the evening. He was coming in at like 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I'll sit there from 10 till 1.30, get it warmed up for him. And when he comes back, I'll figure out something else to do. But mm -hmm. I'm like, I got to get out of this wind. So I'm enjoying my little sit in this tent blind, warm up a little bit. and you take a little nap? No. I really couldn't take a nap. It was like there was a chair in there, but like you couldn't lean back and, I don't know. Just couldn't get comfortable. No, and I couldn't get warm. But so I sat there till about 1.30, then I took a walk back to Pocahontas, and I'm like, I'm not even going to sit in that tree stand. So I just sat on the ground underneath it mm -hmm. and had my shooting sticks. I never saw a deer. And like five minutes till last shooting light, I hear my buddy Keith shoot, and he was only 200 yards from me. And he put down a, just a beautiful 10 point. Mm -hmm. So well, don't get too much into that story. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll revisit that one in a couple of weeks. Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. But so we get back to camp, we celebrate out in the bar and have a hell of a good time drinking beers, listening to tunes. You came up with a new game, right? Yeah. That night? Yeah, Garage Shuffleboard. Garage Shuffleboard? Yeah. It was a beautiful game. It sounds like it. Hmm. I don't know. Should I elaborate or should I no, wait till Keith's we'll wait, episode? We'll wait. I feel like we're uh, we're approaching the uh, leave it in the comments section we got going on. Yeah, here. I think we have arrived there. And we definitely have some comments that were left. So while I, uh, while I get those pulled up, Tom, I know one of them right off the rip. Um, Mike Hunts wants to know. How's the burners? It was decent. It was pretty good. I, I was nervous to try it because in Mike's little love note, he said something about them tasting like shit. And I was scared to try it, but it was kind of just like a, a mild uh, ginger ale. Yeah. I had a little nip of it too. It wasn't, it wasn't Yeah, bad. I could see if maybe if you don't like ginger, why you wouldn't like it, but... Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, it was good. I, I would drink another one. Yeah. Hopefully someday you'll be drinking one with Ted Nugent because he loves the things. Yeah. So what else you got for us, Nikki? Uh, I'm just going through. Uh, let's see here. So we had um, just a couple comments uh, from Todd Wakely that he likes the longer episode format. So we're going to have to start. A couple people have requested the longer mm -hmm. episode. So we'll have to keep going in on that. Um, let's, uh, let's see here. I definitely uh, like the longer episodes too. It, it definitely... When they're longer, it obviously breeds more conversation and more interesting conversation. So I, I enjoy the... It gives you more time to get a tune going. Yeah, exactly. You got to get a little wound up first. Well, you guys keep talking while I'm looking for these. Well, I thought you were ready. You were like, it's time to do it, and you're not fucking prepared. Oh, we're close. We're close. Oh, my God. How close are you, Nick? 
Uh, we're ready now. Sweet. Lay it on me. Uh, Frank, you'll have to answer this one. Okay. Um, this one's also from Mike. Uh, were there any deer that Uncle Frank or your dad passed earlier in the week that were bigger than the one he ended up killing at the end? No. No. Uh, the two deer that we saw or that we killed were the two biggest deer that we saw the entire time. We saw a lot that were close, that were flirting with that, that were like borderline, eh, maybe we should shoot, maybe we shouldn't. Um, but in the end, we ended up killing the two biggest deer that we saw and actually the two biggest deer that were killed on the farm the whole year. We have the two, we killed the two biggest ones out of all of the hunters from archery until last rifle season. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, last week on the episode, you had mentioned that there was four people that you were willing to hunt with. You mentioned your dad, Tom and I, and they're wondering who number four was. Number four is Austin. Those are the four people that I would be willing to, if I was going to plan a hunt, any one of you four, I would be comfortable with planning a hunt around your work ethic and hunting and knowing that I could get everything I want out of a hunt with you guys and mm. it wouldn't be any issue and there's a lot of people that i like to spend time with but i wouldn't trust people to hunt to my level and make it a good time and pursue the way i would want to and to the level that i want to and i, I just don't trust people enough there's people that i know that are you know they talk a lot like how much they love hunting and i can see that they have a lot of passion for the outdoors and they very much enjoy hunting but i wouldn't trust them to go on a hunt out west with them i wouldn't plan a trip to montana or colorado or anywhere out of state with just anyone with yeah. just anyone you know i know it would have to be somebody that i know is going to work hard and hunt as hard as i'm going to to make it a successful hunt mm -hmm. have you done an out-of-stater with austin mm-hmm -mm. Oh, it's a hell of a time. Yeah, I bet it is. I've done two. I've done out-of-staters with both of you guys and obviously my dad several times. And I would love to go out with Babe. I've been trying to get you guys to go somewhere with me, but no one sounds, wants to. Sounds like you have a bead. Uh, we uh, we invited you to Kentucky. I would, didn't want to come down to Kentucky. You guys always... I can't take off... I'm not taking off work for a fucking turkey hunt. Oh, not, come I, on. Won't, I won't <laughs> it's do it. It's a Saturday it. anyway. So much I'm not doing it. I, uh, I like turkey hunting, but I'm not taking off work for it. Mm. I'm not doing it. All right. So uh, next one, Mike processes uh, own deer for the first time. Um, so this is kind of a multi-level question. Um, first off, what tips and tricks do you guys have to make sure this process takes less time? Uh, I do want to preface this whole thing with me, Tom, and Frank learned from journeyman meat cutters. Yes. So we had two guys that spent a long time in the meat cutting industry. And cutting a deer is no different than cutting a cow or a pig or a sheep. It's just a different size. The cuts are the same. Yeah. Um, so I will say that like we had about as good of training as you possibly could ask for. Yeah. When you talk to somebody that butchers cows for a living, um, gets you on the right track very quickly. Yeah. And not most people when they're learning how to, you know, they're, most people teach themselves how to cut up deer. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of chunking stuff up. They know they have back straps. They know they have four quarters, but they don't know what's going on inside those quarters and where there are different cuts of meat in, you know, where you can find a steak in the shoulder. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just think, you know, the front shoulder, those are a lot of very well used muscles. They're going to be tough, shitty for steaks. Just grind it up or mm -hmm. the hind quarters, there's roasts and grinds and, but when you really know a lot of different things about the structure of those different quarters, you can find a lot of quote unquote hidden gems of steaks or different things in different parts of the animal. So yeah. knowing those different things is a huge part of not necessarily making it faster, but making a more versatile cut and more versatile dishes for you know, what you're going to cook out of that deer. It yeah. also makes you a lot quicker when you understand where to cut, how to cut things, and where things are just going to want to fall apart as opposed mm -hmm. to having to use your knife. Yeah, so I guess... And I did tell Mike today, actually, we were talking at work. He was asking me questions about cutting up deer. I was like, when you shoot one in rifle, bring it over. I was yeah. Like, we'll show you. We'll show you how to do it. Um, so 
I guess for me, a couple tips that I would recommend to anybody that's looking to do it themselves. Um, and this one probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, sharp knife. Yeah. Um, and a knife that you're comfortable with. A knife that you're comfortable with is better than a knife that set, somebody says you should use. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody has a little bit different style of knife that they like to use. Um, like Tom t- seems to go towards a fillet knife. Um, well, I, you want to use a different knife depending on what you're doing. To a point. Certain I mean, knives do better at certain things. Yeah. I really like a boning knife. Um, mm-hmm. It's got a really big sweep to it, a sharp point. Um, it's really good for getting underneath silver skin and shaving that back. Um, but another thing, uh, that I believe really speeds up the process is part of this is a two parter one, knowing the anatomy of the muscles Mm -hmm. and two, going in it with a plan. Um, so like when I, Austin, we helped you process your first year, uh, just last week. Um, and basically what I showed Austin, I'm like, okay, here's a hind quarter. Here's your different muscle groups. First part cut down to the femur, get that femur bone out of there. And then you can lay out the entire hind quarter in one piece. And then you can start breaking each of those muscles out. Yeah, and so there's have, just seams everywhere in there. Yeah, you don't I need showed a Austin, knife to pull it apart. Yeah, I'm like you like this right here, really good for steaks. This right here, really good for roasts. This piece here for grind. Um but And I, I'm sorry I wasn't there because I know neither one of these two motherfuckers know what they're doing with a front shoulder. So I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, I Nick wasn't. Nick did a hell of a job. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm honestly I'm I'm re- pretty darn good at cutting up deer and I can cut good. up a front shoulder. I just hate doing it. But it, Tom, yeah. so that's my biggest did, pet peeve when I help cut up other people's deer. I always end up with like 15 front shoulders, and they're like, "Oh, I'll get the back straps. You do these front shoulders." I'm I like, did. Thanks, guys. I did two front shoulders and a hind quarter while Tom did the back straps and the neck roast in one quarter. I remember, that I'm, seems like a pretty even split. On both Tom's, front shoulders. On Tom's front shoulders. Here, I did his back straps, his both front shoulders, and a hind quarter while he did one hind quarter. I was doing a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Tom, do you have any tips to speed up the process? Um, let it hang for a day if mm-hmm. the weather permits. Yeah. If you're in like the mid 40s and you can let it hang, usually a day. Two or three days is pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it helps tighten all those muscles up, and they separate easier than mm-hmm. just like this and it blob. starts to like break down. You'll get a lot more tender meat if you let it hang. That's why, like in butcher shops, they let cows hang for a while because it helps tender up the meat. Right. But yeah, I mean, if you pull the hide off and go right to processing, when the meat's still eighty degrees and it's soft and mushy, it Makes mm-hmm. a mess and it's a lot harder to work with. But if you can let it hang, cool it down, mm-hmm. a lot easier to work with. Yeah. Um, next part was uh, what's the patty maker we use? And that's a Weston brand, Rapid Patty Maker. I'm not sure if Weston still makes it, but I believe LEM makes one. Um, that thing is... They're slick. They're, it's the be- if you like deer burgers, you have to have one of those. It gets everything exactly third pound patties. They're, I mean, you can buy those uh, wax paper squares for mm-hmm. like next to nothing, and you can pack these things so easy. Um, and it's quick. It's yeah. very quick. Yeah. A perfect eight to a gallon freezer bag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, this is going to be another multi part because everybody's got preferences. But uh, what knives or what what knives do you guys use for processing and for gutting? Um, so I'm going to start with Frank, and then we're just going to go clockwise around what we use. For gutting, I prefer uh, and skinning. I like the same knife for gutting and skinning. My favorite knife is a Buck 192. It's uh, I think it's a four and a quarter inch blade. It's a drop point blade. It's the perfect length to you know when you're doing the asshole, you can easily get through the pelvis to gut everything, and you're you know it's just the perfect length knife for gutting. And drop points are really nice for gutting because if you have something that's curved up like that, you're bound to catch the guts. Mm-hmm. So you definitely, I think a drop point knife is yeah very ideal for gutting, and they're also very close to you know that drop point has a nice curve to it so it's close to like a skinner knife i love Mm -hmm. cheap skinners i made you one of those yeah i I love that style of knife but when it comes to versatility a skinner is a skinner Mm -hmm. a drop point knife is great for doing a lot of different things so i like a drop point knife and that specific length of blade 
It's perfect for gutting. It's great for skinning. And when it comes to processing, I use, uh, I have two Victornox knives. One is, they're both kind of like fillet knives. The one is, uh, they're like a stiff fillet knife. They don't have the my, flex. My short one is, it does flex. And okay. I prefer that flex when I'm boning. Uh, the bigger knife that I use for, um, quartering is perfect for that. It's a, it's a stiff knife. It, reaches everything you know when you're cutting front shoulders you can make a nice long cut uh it's it's a great breaking knife and then my other one is a victorinox fillet knife that it has some flex and i like that flex for like doing especially front shoulders when you're working out like a spencer steak in the front shoulder different parts when you're kind of rolling your knife around bones it is a very versatile knife with that you know you can do all of the different parts with it it's basically if you watch any like butchering video on tiktok or instagram that is like the knife that you'll see people using it's a it's a great processing knife and victorinox knives aren't cheap but you're not going to spend an arm and a leg for them you know you can get a, a good processing set of knives for a few hundred dollars and they're going to last you forever my dad has the same two knives that i have that he bought when he was, you know, working in the meat department and butchering a bunch of cows every day. And he's had those same knives for 40 years. And it's funny when you look at his knife versus my knife, his is a lot thinned out, a lot more thinned out because it's been sharpened so many times, but they're the same knife exactly. And, but they, you know, it's 40 years old. It's, they last forever. They're a great knife for what right. you pay for them. You, you, those Victorinox knives you really can't beat. Hmm. For yeah. me, well, go ahead. Well, when it comes to knives, for me, I don't know much about knives, but I mean, I like a smaller buck knife for gutting out a deer. That's definitely nice. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, the model number, but but I did buy a Benchmade knife, and I don't like it whatsoever. I mean, it's like no. an inch wide and two inches long, and it's so big and bulky, I can't really do much with it. And I don't like really wide bladed knives. I think they're just too cumbersome when you're trying to do stuff. I like in the drop point that I have is decently wide. And what's the reason for that? Why why do they make them so like big and rounded? There's just different style knives for different things. Yeah. Um, like Frank said, like they have like a sheepskinner has a, a really a real long, deep curve yeah. and it's a like almost like a bull point. It's very so rounded. no matter how it gives gives you a lot longer stroke of your blade. Like when you're skinning, mm -hmm. you don't want to have to make four thousand little slices. Right. If you have a really like hooped blade, almost like if, if you think of like an ulu, you know that the natives use. Yeah. It just gives you. It's a short knife, but it's because of that it has that long curve to it, it gives you. You can really roll. It, oh, okay, and get yeah. the most out of the cutting surface. And because the tip's rounded, you have a less chance of poking through the hide. Yeah. Um, so it, it just it almost has like a blunt tip to it, so you're not going to poke through a hide like you would with a fillet knife. Yeah, it's still easy. sharp, but you're not going to poke with it. You can cut with it, but you won't poke through something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about all I have for knives. For me, for field dressing a deer, gutting a deer, I have a buck knife 119, and I've had that. I got that for Christmas years ago. Yeah, been a long time. I've probably field dressed, I don't know, 30 deer with it. Mm -hmm. And I just now had my dad put the first edge on it. It was it was like kind of like a butter knife. <laughs> Recently, like the past four or five deer I got with it, I'm like, I'm I, really need to to or I really need to sharpen this thing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as... Um, processing knives. I honestly, I don't know what Dad has. You He's, you usually go towards yeah, a boning knife. Yeah, I, I was saying uh, like brand. He has those what are the Victornex or whatever. Victornox. Yeah. Victornox. Yeah, all the black handled ones are Victornox. Yeah. Um, and, I mean they're they're like Frank said for the money they're top of the line. I mean I don't see why you would need anything else. I can process an entire deer without sharpening. Mm -hmm. Like I, from because I use um a uh are you are you done before i jump into this mm -hmm. so i use a, a style of boning knife that has a deep curve and a wide blade um because i like it that it's really stiff and it's got the curve um like a uh like a skinning knife but it does have a sharp point so i gotta be really careful when i'm uh skinning but i 
for whatever reason, I hate switching knives throughout the process. So I just, I've, I found one that does everything pretty good and I just have to be really careful while I'm skinning. Um, but when it comes to gutting, I used to be a big fan of gut hooks. And the reason I, I hate gut hooks. The reason I got away from gut hooks is a gut hook is only good. Like, cause I always had those knives that had the gut hook on the back and they're just, they're not really good for anything. You else. can't use that knife for anything, but a gut hook. If yeah. you try to put that in the pelvis or do anything else with it, all that gut hook does is catch and is a pain in the ass on everything else. Yeah. So I, I, I moved away from that years ago and actually what I use now is just a razor's edge style knife. So like you can swap the blades out. Because for gutting, I think it's really important to have a razor sharp knife because I want to get in and out of the woods, be done. And so I just use those razor edge knives that are wicked sharp. I can gut really fast with those. And then when I get into the processing side, um, I use uh, that like a, it's a style of boning knife, but it's just got a deeper curve and a wider blade than your standard boning knife. Mm-hmm. Um, Real Tom, quick, I, for, I also wanted to say um, in my gut bag, in my yeah, in my gut bag, I'm a big advocate for the butt out those things are slick i've i've never used one but i've seen you use them and they are slick they're they're fast yeah i don't know why you wouldn't keep one in your bag you don't cut at all you just you put it in twist it till it gets tight and pull it out wow then it's literally done. takes five seconds mm-hmm. hmm. and nick you mentioned those knives with interchangeable blades i have a couple of those and i like those a lot i use my drop point for skinning but when i'm caping because I've done a lot of caping for mounts. Mm-hmm. I use that drop point knife to get to a certain point. Once I get to the head, I love using those knives with interchangeable blades because once you start getting into the skull, you're kind of nicking your blade up a lot, being you know getting into those really delicate spots with the hide around the face and around the antlers and stuff. And you need a really sharp knife to do those that delicate work, but it also nicks up your knife really bad because you're touching up around the skull or around antlers, antlers you're getting yeah. around the pedicles and stuff so i do really really like those knives for caping or you know and getting out the head yeah tom um my my cons has a, a recommendation for you with your new york buck um no don't even say it i he, don't i don't want to hear it he is a big proponent he wants you to do a neck mount um which i don't think you'll go for the neck mount it's a little late for that mike i apologize <laughs> but you, you still have time for this next part he thinks and he says it's what the listeners want shellac what, the antlers that's what one listener wants that's what i want what does that do Not, just make them shiny makes it look like shit oh yeah makes them pop makes them look good no it doesn't <laughs> It was big back in the 80s. Yeah, it was a big thing to shellac antlers a long time ago. Wow. Looks like you just doused them in polyurethane. They shine. It's, it's disgusting. And then they turn yellow after a while. They look good. Um, but that's all we have for the leave it in the comments section for this week. Um, but we do have uh, some more shout outs for tonight. Uh, one specifically, and I don't know if you guys have anyone to shout out. I want to shout out Mike because um, Mike killed a nice buck up in New York opening day uh, yeah because it was it was when i killed my buck awesome well congratulations mike yeah um yeah that's... maybe next time bring it by the cabin yeah maybe he he's not too far from where we're at really? up there wow and he hasn't been to shooters uh, no he said he was talking to me one time and he's like you guys ever go to french creek up there and i've I'm heard like, of it i'm like yeah we go there all the time I'll, he's like oh we always go there right before opening day i was like i can't believe we have never seen you in there before because we have spent a lot of time in there yeah. is he going up this weekend i don't know i'll have to talk to him well he's out of a buck tag he can go up on a doe hunt he could or a bear yeah <laughs> uh our buddy trenton allen killed another huge public land buck he um, just gets the freaking job done I, he dude, shoots that dude some giants is, yeah, I mean, the past couple of years, that dude has really turned it on and is dropping huge bucks left and right. Mm-hmm. Um, but another one I want to shout out is uh, Trenton's cousin. Trenton's cousin killed a albino doe. That's awesome. Little wow. young kid um, gets an albino doe. I mean, to me, that's awesome. I mean, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity for most people. Yeah. Um, they say that's bad luck too, don't they? Nah. I don't believe that. <laughs> My dad is probably the most successful hunter I've ever met, and he shot an albino doe mm. so, from the ground stalked it yeah stalked it into its bed with a bow with a bow wow i we did a full episode on that hunt years ago yeah uh, i'd have to go back and look at it but yeah he did 
full on stock from the ground with a bow shot a albino doe in its bed yeah and he still kills stuff all the time so i don't think it's bad luck. i don't believe in the bad luck juju on an albino no. um mainly because it's a, it's a um it's a genetic deformity like it, it's really something that you should take out of the herd mm-hmm. um and i know there's probably there's a lot of people that you know it's majestic there's they're very rare but if you're looking to make a strong healthy deer herd you don't want albinos in your herd no that's just my yeah. So congratulations on a once in a really a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. So um, anybody else? I think uh, To killed another buck. Um, he got another one. Pretty sure. Wow. Pa. I don't know. I haven't haven't fully talked to him because I I feel bad, but like guys that were like close to, I try not to ask too many questions because I want to get them on the podcast to hear the full story, and I hate knowing the I, story before you hear it. Yeah, because I want to be able to ask authentic questions right. through it. Um, so like Trent's one of them. Like I already, I told him, I said, Hey, you know, we're going to get you on. We're going to do it at full episode. You got two bucks down. Um, but I didn't ask too many questions and it's not because I don't care. It's just because I want to, I want it to be authentic when we talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, we're, uh, this is, we're into deer camp. This is it. You know, we're yeah, uh, the rifle rifle season. Season. starts yeah. next week. Austin, I do. I feel two like weeks. I got to give you a moment to bring it up. Before what? we close it out, opening day of bear season Saturday. It is, and we're, I don't think we're gonna have much snow. Which that sucks. That makes it if tough. there's snow, it's like oh, you can't beat opening day of bear rifle when there's snow on the ground. There's just so yeah. much going on. Get People on a track and bear. go walk yeah. around. Because we really, if you think about it, we have like Frank's. You know, he's our adventure guy. Guy's been everywhere. Tom drops bucks all the time. I'm big into the turkeys, and then we got our bear guy across the table. Well, I gotta thank my dad. He really taught me a lot growing up about bear we're all in the same boat all of our dads taught us everything we know mm-hmm. um and that's where it starts that's where our passion started and that's what last week's episode was all about was you know the mule deer hunt with frankie and his dad um so yeah there's no shame in that oh yeah yeah we'll see it's coming up so i'm gonna head back to new york try and get myself a buck up at camp i think you that's know. what i'm gonna do well, I already got the, one, so I'm going to go up and do some doe hunting. Maybe have, run into Mike at the French Creek. Let's hope. Yeah, we'll have to set that up. That'll be fun. And it's new bow season, too. Everyone drops their oh, new God. bows this week. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bows up for sale today. Yeah. Golly, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, we're right into the heart of deer season. Tradition is, is well and alive here in Pennsylvania and New York. Um, so if you guys got a deer camp, I hope you do. If not, make one, and uh, you guys know what to do. Get outside.